hello guys my name is desmond and i welcome you to my youtube channel so guys for today's lesson we'll be looking at geography exam paper of november 2019 so for today's lesson we'll be looking at question number four okay so this question paper is available on my telegram channel so if you've got a telegram account you can just search for solving exam papers i've posted this question together with the annex char associated with this question so now guys i hope you're able to see we'll be doing question number four okay so 4.1 as you can see we're given a statement so the statement reads as follows uh, before we start with the question guys if you've got something to write you can just note down some of the information that I provide. Uh, I will try by all means to be as low as possible. And again, make sure that I provide you with the relevant information. So you can just write down all that you need to write. And again, please do make sure to have a glass of water. So now we can start with the business of the day, guys. So uh, the statement says, refer to figure 4.1 showing rural and urban settlements match the statements below a uh, to, to settlement type a or b write only the letter next to the question numbers so 4.1.1 to 4.1.7 you just write the letter next to the question number in the answer book so ladies and gentlemen you don't give i mean you don't need to give a definition or you don't need to give any term as part of your answer the only thing that you do is just to write a or b so let's have a look at the annex chart uh, or the figure that we're given it's figure 4.1 rural and urban settlements so you can see we've got two types of settlements which is settlement type A and settlement type B, okay? So obviously you can see settlement type A, it should be urban settlements, okay? And obviously B, it should be rural settlements. So that means all of these questions will be based on these two settlement types. And all that you need to do is to choose A or B, okay? So I know some of you or most of you guys, especially when you find these questions uh, difficult, you just choose between A and B. But I would advise you to just take your time, check the marks allocated to each question. If a question is allocated one mark, just know guys, there's nothing complicated with those questions. You know those type of questions which are allocated a mark or two marks, they're not really that much difficult. You just need to relax, take uh, take your time and make sure that you fully understand what the question says. Because it's not only about the examiner trying to see if you know an answer to a question, but most importantly, they want to see if you actually understand the question itself. Okay, so we can now start with the first question, 4.1.1, and the question says, settlement associated with secondary and tertiary activities remember guys for the purpose of this lesson uh, as i've indicated in previous lessons it's not only to give you the answers it's not only to give you a you know the memorandum of these questions and again most importantly guys it's you know it's all about teaching you on how to approach this type of questions. Okay, very, very much important, guys. Not just to answer the question, but to train you on how to analyze these questions, on how to read these questions, on how to identify the keywords or the instructions in the question, okay? So in this case, instruction was given in the statement so that means in the questions, we are most likely to find the keywords which should uh, be able to assist us to provide the relevant answers. Okay, so guys, I'm going to tell you this for free. You know, most of 
most of students uh, are struggling with this but it's only brilliant students who understand what i'm going to tell you now you you're, you're very much lucky if um you know you're watching this lesson because this is going to benefit you and 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 i'll be using this strategy to approach almost or most of the questions that i'll be uh, treating especially theory related questions guys in every question there must be a key weight okay most of you you know or you might know that in every question or statement uh, there might be a key weight so it's in most cases where you find that in the statement is you find uh, instructions but in the questions i'm 100 percent sure guys this is where you find a uh, key weights okay so a uh, what is the key weight or key weights in question 4.1.1 how do you ad identify these key weights which is the most question that you should ask yourself guys and i'm sure there's someone who's wondering what is actually the key weight okay so without us having to look at this question or refer to this question guys i'm going to ask you this question which weights a uh, if were to be removed it could be one weight it could be more weights but which weights when removed from this sentence will make that question invalid irrelevant vague or not clear okay so this is how a uh, you detect your keywords if you remove secondary and tertiary activities can you see guys you can still leave activities but if you remove secondary and tertiary then you've removed the cream of this cake can you understand guys you have removed the key weights from that question why is it so important that you should remove the key weights from the sentence or the question it's because your answer will be dependent on those key weights guys very very much important you know i've been using this strategy ever since grade 10 in the previous grades i wasn't aware of this approach as i've been reading a lot of books as i've been treating a lot of question papers i then realized that in every question there's a cream of a cake you know there are key weights in every sentence or a question. So it took me some time to realize how. You know, the how is very, very much important, guys. It took me some time to realize how do you identify these key weights. At first, I thought, you know, these uh, difficult terms or these fancy terms were the key weights of the question or statement. Then after some time, I realized that, you know, some words are just words because they shorten the question uh, or they just make the statements to be specific or they just make uh, the questions or statement to be more relevant. But there are key words, guys. There are key words in every question. So if you remove secondary and tertiary, uh, you then now have a statement which is settlement associated with and activities it really doesn't make sense guys you can see it really doesn't make sense so if you are able to then identify your keywords that means your answer will be dependent on you knowing and understanding secondary and tertiary activities okay so a question that i would ask you is that do you know what are those if you know what are those then we can quickly refer to these two types of settlements let's have a look at the two types of settlements so you already know that settlements associated with secondary and tertiary activities are uh, urban settlements okay you already know so you just go to this figure to check um, 
you know if if settlement type a is on urban settlement or on rural settlement so now that you see that a is the one which is on a urban settlement then it means your answer to this question is a okay and this question is allocated one mark so that means each question is allocated one mark and we've got seven questions so that means if we answer these questions correctly then we score seven marks okay very very much important guys what i've just explained to you i hope uh, you find value in that information guys i've been using that approach uh, even now i'm still using the same approach in case if i'm dealing with a bit confusing or a bit difficult uh, statements sentence or questions i use the same approach and i wish you could adopt the same strategy it works it worked for me and it works i mean it worked for other students that have you know taught them this this strategy so now let's move to the second question we might not need to identify a uh, you know the keywords in every question but i'll just try to indicate you on some questions so now 4.1.2 says primary activities dominate in this settlement okay if you remove primary then you remain with activities dominate in this settlement what activities it could be primary it could be secondary it could be tertiary okay so that means your keyword on this question it's primary if you remove primary the whole thing doesn't make any sense or it's not 100 percent clear so that means a uh, primary uh, is your keyword to this question guys the reason why i'm saying primary is because an answer to this question will be based on you knowing or understanding primary okay what if someone says dominate is the keyword to this sentence or question i wouldn't argue according to them it could be dominate but the question is will their answer be based on that dominate by that i mean do you really need to know and understand what is dominate for you to be able uh, to answer this question in relation to figure a and b can you see guys it's not like a, a dominate will help you to choose between a and b a uh, you will need dominate and all these other letters okay but if you remove primary you might not really need dominate in order for you to be able to choose between settlement type a and b guys i hope you understand okay so obviously guys because you know and understand primary activities you will obviously realize that primary activities are, are mostly dominating in a rural settlements so you just go back to our a uh, figure and you look for a rural settlement obviously it's b so that means an answer to this question is b okay nothing is complicated i hope so far you're able to notice that there's nothing complicated with these questions guys third question 4.1.3 the question says known as a unifunctional settlement okay guys known can be a uh, the first letter of the, that question which is known it can be the cream of this cake guys it cannot be okay as it cannot it cannot be a it cannot be unifunctional could be a you know the keyword to this question okay so a uh, do you fully understand what is meant by unifunctional? So, a uh, another question may be asked, guys. Do we have the opposite meaning of unifunctional? Which is one of the good questions that you could ask yourself. Okay? So, guys, when I said you should uh, uh, sometimes make use of these question papers to make some notes, uh, you know, to study using this question paper... 
it, it gives you a challenge that you should go and do a research about unifunctional. Okay, so you might find that you either have unifunctional or multifunctional. Okay, so uh, between these two types of uh, settlements, where have you got a, you know, a, a unifunctional settlement? Is it, is it in urban settlements or is it in rural settlements? Okay. So obviously, guys, even though you might not understand unifunctional, but you might know that or you might have an idea that it's either you have unifunctional or multifunctional. Okay. So you know one thing for sure that in urban areas, you've got a, you know, it's actually associated with multifunctional activities. It could be a multifunctional in terms of services in terms of a lot of things guys so that obviously means unifunctional could be a settlement type b okay so guys even if i'm not 100 percent sure with this question but b is the suitable answer to this question why because of that weight unifunctional okay so obviously in rural areas you mostly have a you know, less functions in terms of services or in terms of activities. Uh, you haven't got a lot of activities there. So that's why I'm saying unifunctional can be a word which is maybe associated with singular or, a, you know, little, activi little activities being done in that particular settlement. Okay, so guys, let's now move to the fourth question obviously the previous question is allocated one mark so an answer to that question it should be b you just write b and you'll be given one mark for that question so 4.1.4 this settlement offers multiple functions guys i notice a trend you can see 4.1.1 and 4.1.2 are questions which are a uh, you know related to each other somehow there's a relationship between these two questions and now i notice that for 4.1.3 and 4.1.4 there's also a relationship so since uh, you know we said b which is rural settlement it's a unifunctional settlement then you know a could be multiple functions i mean uh, it could be an answer to this question, which is a settlement that offers multiple functions. Okay, so very, very much important, guys. Very, very much important that I say very, very much important because what I'm about to say, it's very, very much important, guys. You should be careful of how the questions are asked. Okay, always say this. In most of my uh, uh, my lessons that you should be aware of how the questions are asked in most cases they refer to one and the same thing but they ask these questions differently guys it's like a you know you, 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 you drink a glass of water instead of instead of someone asking you if a, you know, you, you had a cup of water. They can just ask or try to find out in different ways. But an answer to those different questions will be the same, which is a confirmation that you did uh, drink some water. Okay. Someone may say, did you drink some water? Someone may say, are you thirsty? Someone may say, uh, 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 did you have a glass of water? So can you see, guys, did you have a glass of water? Are you thirsty? You, you, you can answer this question of, uh, did you have a glass of water by saying, yes, if you did drink some water, okay? An, ans an, an answer to a question of, are you thirsty, will be no. Why? Obviously, because you did drink some water, okay? I, I, I'm sure you now have an idea of what I'm trying to say, guys. I'm, I'm just hoping that 
i've actually used a, a relevant example this time around because it's not easy you know to find this relevant uh, examples which you can relate to but i hope that was easy guys what i'm trying to say in short is questions are asked differently but you find that answers to those questions are the same and for you to be able to realize these guys that's only if you have read a lot of textbooks you've read multiple textbooks you've read different textbooks you've read from the start until the end of the chapter it's enough if you just read it three times okay if you just read it three times not not necessarily in a row or uh, within the same day today you can just read from the first up until this uh, the, the you know the end from the start up until the end of the chapter not necessarily to understand but just to read so that you know the, the vocabulary associated to that particular chapter okay just to familiarize yourself with the words used or the terms used in that particular chapter then when you read for the second time you read to write down some notes okay that, that's you studying remember so you, you just read a uh, from the startup until the end of the chapter just making notes you can just decide to write those heavy words which you don't understand write them down all of them in that order and then in order of which words you discovered first then from there that's when you can go and consult with your teacher and say i've been studying and I encountered these words i don't understand what they mean i don't understand how uh, they are related to this particular chapter uh, in that way you'll be able to then have an idea as the teacher your mentor or your teacher uh, explained uh, explains to you those those words okay then as soon as you've got clarity in relation to those words then you go back to that same textbook you read again uh, with attempt to reading with understanding okay read to understand then from there that's when you can start treating the question papers guys very very much important that i say very very much important because um what i'm about to say is very very much important guys i'm giving you a receipt to study okay so this is a receipt that i would encourage you to adopt when you study especially theory related uh, subjects this is a strategy that works this is a strategy that worked for me uh, and i'm sure it could also work for you okay very very much important guys so now i think we can move uh, with the business of the day so obviously guys this settlement which offers multiple functions it should be a so that means an answer to that question should be a okay so ladies and gentlemen let's now move to question 4.1.5 okay so guys the question says the pattern of this settlement is always nucleated very very much important guys the pattern of this i mean this settlement is always nucleated i'm giving you a challenge guys a uh, can someone if 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 at uh, this I, I actually need you to be honest with these guys please do be honest because you know i'm i'm you know i'm forced to just mention it in the end but please take this moment to comment a uh, with the letter or the word that you thought was the cream of this cake okay please do comment be honest with yourself uh, do not uh, you know write what i'm going to mention because i just want to see the impact of this strategy guys if you realize how massive this strategy is because you know if you chose let's say pattern for instance just write pattern without having to analyze if pattern is the key word okay so guys uh, for me, I think the remember it's not like there's a formula to select the 
the uh, you know the the keyword in every given statement or question and again keywords may differ from one person to another because it obviously depends on your understanding uh you know in terms of in terms of that particular chapter or subject so the more you know chances of you being able to identify the most relevant keywords okay so in my case i would say nucleated could be the possible keyword to this sentence why because if i remove nucleated then i remain with the pattern of this settlement it's always can you see it's it's a bit uh, vague you know so that means nucleated could be the possible a uh, cream of the cake okay so a uh, for every cream of the cake or for every keyword ask yourself if that particular keyword has got its opposite meaning if 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 something it's centralized we obviously know that the opposite could be decentralized or scattered okay it doesn't necessarily mean the exact opposite of that particular weight okay so obviously nucleated a uh, the opposite weight for nucleated could be you know dispersed or could be decentralized okay decentralized so even if you don't know a uh, you know even if you don't know what is being a uh, nucleated in one of the settlements but because you understand they're talking about the pattern being nucleated so you think of a uh, the opposite of dispersed or the opposite of decentralized so obviously guys if we refer to our figure you will realize that in urban settlement you've got a lot of things nucleated guys you've got buildings there a uh, not only the buildings but there are a lot of things which are you know a a a centralized or nucleated okay or built within a, a a small space okay but when you refer to a a settlement type b which is rural settlement you know in this type of settlements you have especially buildings they're scattered you find that there's a house there a hundred hundred meters away you've got another house there which could be three hundred meters away okay so they are scattered in urban i mean in in rural uh, uh, settlements so that means an answer to this question could be a um, it could be a which is urban settlement okay so 4.1.6 um an example of such a settlement is a city okay guys i'm sure you you know you're now enjoying uh, identifying these keywords in these sentences obviously for this one according to me i think city is uh, the key uh, you know the key weight of this sentence so is the, the the cream of the cake okay very very much important guys please do make sure that you 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 try to adopt this approach and remember guys when you are in exam you don't have to take that much long in each and every question if you know an answer to the question you can just quickly write down that answer do not waste time trying to think i mean to, to identify the cream of the cake even though you've already identified the possible answer to that particular question i'm only doing this so that i help you to study and again uh, you know it helps a lot in case if you're stuck with some of the questions okay so guys an example of such a a settlement it's a city if you remove a city you remain with an example of such a settlement is a and you see now you need that keyword to make this sentence a uh, you know uh, fully understandable and 
your answer will be based or dependent on you understanding what is a city okay then you go back to those figures uh, you check settlement type a and b obviously guys a it's a city so guys you can see that it's very very easy to answer this type of questions which are allocated one marks okay so now let's move to 4.1.7 which is the last question okay the smallest settlement is called a farm state okay very very much important guys um you know here we are comparing two types of settlements okay so a uh, I think we've got key weights in this question, which is smallest and farm state. Let's try to remove those two weights. You remain with the settlement. It's called A. Can you see, guys? So now what if a, a very good question may be asked, and I, I, I'm sure you asked yourself this question. What if you only remove... A one key weight for example let's start uh, by removing smallest then you have the settlement is called a farm state so now that you've removed smallest with that remaining a uh, sentence or, or question which is the settlement is called a farm state can you not be able to choose between a and b obviously guys you can still be able to choose the correct answer because of that other word which is farm state okay you know urban cannot be a farm state but a rural settlement suits to be farm state i mean a farm state it suits to be an answer to this question so now what if you remove farm state then you remain with the smallest settlement is called a so obviously if you have to choose between a and b so you know rural which is b is the smallest settlement can you see guys so i hope this was actually a perfect question uh, to make you understand what i mean when i say you should be able to identify the keywords in the given sentence uh, uh, remove those keywords and check what you remain with from there guys it means uh, after you have removed the keywords you can now strike those two options with these two keywords okay you can just say smallest farm state between a and b which is urban and rural which settlement can be relevant or related to these two keywords obviously it cannot be a, a urban settlement can you see how big this settlement and you've got your keyword as smallest okay so guys i hope you really enjoyed this lesson and i'm sure you could relate uh, and i think you know it wasn't that much confusing uh, i would encourage you guys please please do try by all means uh, to use this strategy because uh guys it 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 did wonders for me i i managed to you know confidently approach a lot of questions some were difficult some were simple some were straightforward but with this approach i was able to just apply it in every question and with me being able to apply it on each and every question i was able to then fill it even when i read the question just like you've noticed guys i didn't have to read a question uh, 10 times for me to be able to understand or be able to identify possible keywords and again i was able to notice if you've got only one or multiple keywords in a you know in in in, in one statement or one sentence or one question so it actually takes some time for you to perfection this approach but it's very very much important guys so i hope you enjoyed today's lesson guys 
and i wish you all the best with your exams i hope you practice this approach or this strategy before you start with your exams do not uh, do not practice it uh, do not practice it while you're writing your exams because it might confuse you and again it might make you lose some time okay ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as i did my name is desmond and i'm out